Hello, my friends. Today we're going to talk about the before bed routine. It's something that I address often because the before bed routine is the core of all your routines. So let's go over your routines really quickly. There's the morning routine, laundry routine, paper routine, after dinner routine, before bed routine, and all the little clutter checks, which I'm now going to call clutter stops, uh, that happen Monday, Monday, Wednesday, Friday. No, no, no. <laughs> they happen after breakfast, after lunch, and after dinner. So those are all the routines. Those are things that we're going to be doing every day for the rest of our lives as a matter of habit. And once you get them down as a habit, they will serve you. You won't be struggling with these to say, what do I have to do now? Ugh, what did I forget? It won't be that way. It'll just happen automatically when you set them up as a habit and you do them on purpose over and over again. Now, occasionally it will cross your mind what you're doing, but it won't be something that you have to struggle with. I'm going to give you the simplest example I can think of, and that is the habits that we form as children so that when we grow up, we don't think about them. And the number one, one that I'm going to remind you of is flushing the toilet. When you're little, oftentimes you would forget to flush the toilet and your parent will remind you, flush the toilet, flush the toilet, okay, flush the toilet, wash your hands, flush the toilet, wash your hands. Now, when you use the toilet, you don't think, hmm, should I flush the toilet? Oh, I forgot to flush the toilet. Oh my goodness, I think I'm just gonna wait to flush the toilet later. No, of course not, it's just a habit. You just flush the toilet. Yeah, there are those times as distracted people that we might forget to flush the toilet, but you know what I'm talking about. In general, we don't think about it. We flush the toilet. No one has to tell us. It's not a decision we make. It's a habit. So that's the way your habits are going to be. Okay, you're going to forget something once in a blue moon, but generally you're going to do it all. You're going to make your bed and brush your teeth and wash your face and moisturize your skin, etc. So we're going to zoom in on the core, the cornerstone of all of the uh, routines, which is your before bed routine. First, let's address, well, let's go over the before bed routine, and then I'm going to address something really critical to help you get this routine done every evening. The before bed routine consists of laying out your clothes for tomorrow when you get out your pajamas for bed. So when you get out your pajamas or t-shirt or whatever it is you wear, I recommend gowns or pajamas because you feel nicer in those than you do a t-shirt. But if you choose to sleep in a t-shirt, that's your decision, okay? But think about it. Think about how you're clothing yourself. Think about how you would clothe your little darling girl, okay? And think of yourself as your own little darling girl. Not a baby though, a grown woman. All right, so pajamas come out. You're touching fabric. You're thinking about clothing. Go to the, go to your closet, open it up, walk in, pick out an outfit for tomorrow. Now that's going to involve looking at your planner. If you have to, if you can't remember what you're doing tomorrow, oh yeah, I've got a dentist appointment tomorrow. I think I'll wear a different top and these pants will be fine. And I think I'll wear these shoes. Okay. And you lay them out. Or, oh, I don't have anything to do tomorrow. I'm working in the garden tomorrow. It's a free day. I'm just going to be doing routines and I'm going to play in my garden. So I'm going to pick some shorts and this cute little t-shirt and these shoes and socks or these whatever. Okay. So you lay those out. And then the, the second step after laying out your clothes is to go take a shower or a bath. Now, some of you choose to take your shower or your bath in the morning, and that is fine. The idea is that you take a shower or a bath every day. I realize if you live in really cold temperatures and it's winter time, that it's bad for your skin to overbathe. I get that. But at least get your body clean for bed. I recommend a bath or a shower because it's relaxing and it cleanses off all the skin cells that you have shed in a 24 hour period, which makes you feel refreshed. So bathing your body is a good idea once a day. I like for you to do it in the evening because it relaxes you. But if you choose to do it in the morning because you need it to wake up or whatever, that's fine. That's your choice. Just know that before bed, you need to clean up a little bit. Okay. And then you're going to wash your face, which you could do in the shower or in the tub. 
You're going to moisturize your face and your body. You're going to moisturize your skin, at least the exposed parts, because this is your largest organ, your skin. It's an actual organ. It's not just something that you tan and decorate. It's actually an, a working organ that serves to keep you alive. So give yourself some moisture, especially if you've been exposed to sun over the years, you'll notice that those parts of your body are drier. So a little moisture, okay? And then, um, so you've washed your face, you've moisturized your skin, special moisturizer for your face. And I'd say if you're 28 or older, you need a little eye cream, a little special cream for your eye, all different, all designed for different parts of your body. All right, next, we're, so we've done our moisturizing. Next, we're going to make sure our teeth are clean. So we're going to brush our teeth. We're going to floss our teeth. The last part of the before bed routine is to go into the kitchen, put out a fresh towel for tomorrow, take the one that we used all day, put it in the laundry room. But before we do, take that used towel and just dry out your sink, make it look nice. If there's something in your sink, it needs to go in the dishwasher or hand wash it and put it in the dish rack. Okay. If you have a dishwasher, make sure there's soap in it. Make sure you close it tight and you turn it on. Then you can go to bed. Go to bed. You need to be in bed at a certain time. That's part of your before bed routine. So if you know that you're going to be getting up at six in the morning, then I'm going to recommend that you go to bed no later than 10 or 11 at night. And that means you need to be in there sleeping by 10 or 11 at night because you need seven or eight hours of sleep. Most of you do. Occasionally, there'll be a person who does well on six hours, but most people need somewhere between seven and eight hours a night. Some people even need more. Okay, so if you have to be in bed at 9.30, for example, then at nine o'clock, do your before bed routine. It's going to take 15 minutes to a half an hour, depending on what you have going on. And then get in your bed and relax. It takes a while. It takes about 15 minutes on average for an adult to fall asleep without distractions. Okay, so that means that you're not watching your YouTube videos now. You're not looking at emails or checking Facebook or watching Instagram or watching television. You're going to sleep now. This is when it all gets turned off. If you have a spouse that watches TV, then get yourself some uh, eye covers or some ear pa, you know, ear things, some little ear foamies, whatever it takes. Or if you sleep during the day because you're a nurse, make sure you have blackout curtains. If there's noise in your house, put some little ear foamies. I don't know what they're called, but you know, the little yellow things that you put in your ears to block out the noise so you can sleep. Okay. Um, the idea is when I'm teaching this, I'm teaching you the general average way of doing it, which is a Monday through Friday, Saturday, Sunday off if you work or if you're at home, Saturday, Sunday off for your spouse, and um, you're going to bed at nighttime and waking up in the morning, but that might not be your situation. So you get to edit this to make it work for you. Okay, and I can't tell every single situation on this video. It would take forever, but you know what you have to do, and you know how much sleep you need to get so you have to be really cognizant of that and go to bed on time. The reason you want to get up at a certain time, even at an, as an at-home homemaker, is you need to get up a half hour before the population of your home gets up. So if you have one little guy, I always had a, ba I had a baby girl who wanted to get up when, I, when she heard me breathe a little differently. She would wake up, even from her nursery down the hall. So... There's going to be one or two that are going to rise up early. If they're old enough to understand you, if they're not a baby, they're old enough to understand you. For example, if they're the child who get up, gets out of their bed and comes into the living room after you've put them in bed, you say to them, it's not time to get up. It's time to go to sleep. Go back. Let's go back to your bed and get in your bed. Do you need a drink of water? Do you need to go potty? Okay. Night, night, sweet dreams. I love you. Well, in the morning, it's the same way. Oh, honey, it's too early to get up. You need, do you need to go potty? Go potty. Get a drink of water and go back to bed. If you can't sleep, if they're saying that to you, that's fine. You just rest in your bed. You can play with your dolly or you can play with your dinosaur or you can read your book or whatever, but don't wake up your siblings. Okay. Don't wake up your sister. Be quiet. Shh. You get up in 25 minutes or whatever. All right. And then, so, so when you get up in the morning, you have to be able to have that time to yourself. 
that's why you want to go to bed at night in time so that when you get up, you have 25 to 30 minutes to yourself. Listen, I am you. I know how this feels. I remember getting my coffee in the morning and sitting in my chair and drinking it so quietly and praying that I could get through the cup of coffee before my family got up. We get very little time as parents, whether we work or we're at home, and those times are precious. This little 25 to 35 minute period in the morning for you is going to set you up for a good day because number one, you won't feel like you're being martyred. I do everything for this family. I never have time for myself. If you get up in the morning and you get your hair done and you do the things that you want to do in the morning, the morning routine, you empty the dishwasher, then you're going to feel more like a good mom. You're going to be able to help your children instead of say, hold on, or let me do this real quick. So it all comes down to the before bed routine. You need to go to bed on time. If, now here's my little trick. If you have, it's summertime, we have later sunlight, right? So and let's say that you're exhausted at the end of the day. Imagine that, whether you work or, at, or an at-home mom, you're exhausted at the end of the day, then you're going to probably nod off in front of the television way too early. You haven't done your, morning, your before bed routine. So you put the children in bed, you barely made it through that, you come watch TV with your husband and you fall asleep on the couch. You are now what I call a zombie. You are not going to get up and do the things you need to do without a lot of self-discipline. I can fall asleep on the couch and become a zombie myself. That means that I might go to bed without brushing my teeth or taking a shower or laying out my clothes because that's what happens when your mind is asleep. You can't perform. So my trick for you is after dinner, go and pick out your pajamas, lay out your clothes, take a shower and you can put on your pajamas or if you think someone's going to come over or you feel like you might need to run out and do something or you know you're going to have to pick somebody up from a meeting then put on your clothes for tomorrow you're only going to wear them for a moment it's not going to be long so put on your clothes for tomorrow and relax so you've had your bath you've cleaned your face you've moisturized your skin and you're in your pjs or your clothes for tomorrow okay now, if your clothes for tomorrow are a business suit because you've got a big meeting and you still need to pick up Tom from his Cub Scouts meeting, then lay out a pair of shorts and a t-shirt and put those on. And when you come home from work and you put your, your um, suit away, put your t-shirt and shorts on. But have a plan so that you can get ready for bed mostly. So your shower's done, your face is done. Um, you can't run the dishwasher yet because the family's still up. Your husband's still up. If he has that final bowl of popcorn and he doesn't put it in the dishwasher, or even if he does, you still need to wipe out the sink and run the dishwasher. Put soap in it, close it, and run it. So unless you delegate that to him and you can depend on him to do that, you're going to be awake enough to do that before you really relax on the couch in the end, okay, if it's still not bedtime. So... Take your shower, take care of your face, take care of your skin, um, get dressed for bed or for picking up your child from a meeting or whatever, a, 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 a sport event, or maybe you even have to go watch. Um, make sure the dishes are all in the dishwasher. And then right before bed, all you have to do is wipe out the sink, run the dishwasher, and then go brush your teeth and floss your teeth and go to bed. This The idea I have for flossing your teeth is that you get those little things that are called flossers or placards. They're little, little plastic things with a little stretched floss on it. You can buy a whole package of them for really inexpensive. Even the Dollar Tree has them for a dollar. And you'll be able to floss your teeth really quickly and easily without having to do the whole string thing and you know go through each tooth. Because when you're tired at the end of the day, that's the last thing you want to do is stand in front of a mirror and do that. I'm, I keep my flossers, well actually Mr. B keeps the flossers on his side of the bed and at night after I've brushed my teeth, I have my water by my bed, I get in the bed and he says, here's your flosser. I'm now laying in the bed, flossing my teeth really quickly. I just lay that on the side table when I'm done and get a sip of water. If something comes out of your teeth, you've already brushed them, this stuff is in your mouth anyway. <laughs> Don't worry about it. Just get a drink of water. You'll be fine. You'll have much healthier teeth and gums for that. 
And I'm telling you this as an ex-dental assistant. Floss your teeth once a day. Brush your teeth twice a day. Okay. All right. So that's the before bed routine. I know I gave you a little bit longer information today than I normally do, but the before bed routine is key to setting up your morning. And so it is the cornerstone routine. And I encourage you to do this every evening. You're going to feel so much better. Your children need a little before bed routine too. Okay. That's it for today. I hope you have a wonderful day and I hope that you always remember to be beautiful because you are beautiful.